Welcome back to Notre Dame Day. I'm Colleen Wilcox. I am excited to welcome to this studio Dominic Bashone, the director of Notre Dame's Ruth M. Hillebrand Center for Compassionate Care, which strives to promote compassionate care in medicine. Dr. Bashone graduated from Notre Dame in 1980 with his bachelor's degree in psychology, and I understand you also earned a master of divinity degree from Notre Dame in 1993. Dr. Bashone, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm happy to have you here. And tell us a little bit about the mission of the Ruth M. Hillebrand Center for Compassionate Care. Well, thank you for having me, Colleen. Uh, the mission of the Hillebrand Center goes back to the first person who donated to the endowment for the center, Ruth Hillebrand. She was a practicing psychologist, practicing in Manhattan from Toledo. Um, and one night she was waiting for her test results, and the physician called. She was alone at home. Uh, he told her she had mesothelioma. There was nothing that could be done about it, and he hung up. So it was a rough way to get bad news. Um, but uh, Ruth is, uh, was an amazing person to turn that harshness into kindness. And through her brother Joseph, uh, made the first major endowment for the Ruth Hillebrand Center for Compassionate Care and Medicine. And the mission of the center is to advance the scientific practice um, uh, of compassionate care and medicine, to improve patient care, and to improve physician and clinician well-being. There's a whole new science out there, a science of compassion, and it's the biology of compassion, the neuroscience of compassion, the psychology of compassion, and we're one of the first places to apply that to practice. So we have an undergraduate component, and we also have a continuing medical education component. And I understand, too, we talked about your educational qualifications. It really makes you distinctly qualified to lead this center. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, so I'm a medical psychologist. Mm -hmm. I got my doctorate from Loyola in Chicago with a specialty in why do people go into helping professions and how do they survive in it? How do they stay compassionate in it? I've spent most of my career training physicians uh, and other clinicians as well. And I also have my own practice. And about seven years ago, Notre Dame uh, uh, wanted to get this going. And there were several other families that also contributed to this, the Wright family. And there's another major donation to honor a physician that's coming up um, as well. So uh, I've spent most of my life uh, accompanying physicians and nurses and other clinicians. And uh, it, it's, you know, uh, we all want the same thing, but it's rough all in the same ways, meaning that patients and loved ones are like going, healthcare is crazy, how are we going to do this? But physicians, nurses, other clinicians are feeling exactly the same way. Yeah. And so uh, I spent most of my years uh, uh, with physicians and nurses um, really accompanying them through this kind of, uh, it's a hard time in healthcare. Absolutely. So. And I want to know too, how unique is it for a college to teach undergraduates about yeah. compassionate care and medicine? Well, it's, we think we're the first um, uh, undergraduate institution to teach the science of compassion in medicine. And so we have two pieces to that. One is the science of compassion, which is a brand new discipline. But the second thing is we have uh, uh, one of our best courses the is the medical counseling skills course. And that's one where we are teaching practical skills for treating patients in terms of interpersonal skills. We're teaching that at the undergrad level. That's usually taught later on. What's going on, though, is that when people uh, go to medical school, they are overwhelmed with uh, so much to do. This gets, this gets put on the back burner. Uh, what we try to do is teach where the gaps are. So we don't teach the history and physical, that kind of thing. But we, we have a course where we use improv actors. We make a mock exam room. Um, and um, that's, uh, from, from what we uh, understand, that's probably the first, we're probably the first place to do that. Yeah. That is really interesting, bringing in actors, that's so different. I mean, how important is it to teach students these skills, though? Well, what we're discovering, and this is, we've been doing this now for about seven years, um, is that when we, we teach the skills exactly as I used to teach when I was teaching in a physician residency program, um, what happens is, when people go to medical school, they are overwhelmed with all that they have to learn. Uh, and so when they get to working with patients, it's like that's a skill they put on the back burner. Um, so what we're discovering, and we've done some research on this to talk to our uh, former graduates, 
is that when we plant these seeds early, you know, so how do you connect with a patient? Uh, how do you make a patient feel safe? How do you break bad news? How do you work with people on health behavior change? How do you work with people who are really um, discouraged or having a difficult time following through? What happens is, what, we, what the, our former students have been telling us is it plants a seed mm -hmm. and it just grows all the way through because uh, what often happens is people don't, a lot of people in medicine and dentistry and other helping professions don't learn this until much later on because there's no time in medical school. Yeah. So we try to teach for where the gaps are. All right. Well, that makes so, a lot of sense. We want to yeah. thank you so much for well, taking you, the time Colleen, for having to me. join us on set I've got here. My little, uh, it has this little prop as well. So uh, if, if they uh, can uh, look at that, this is the heart of gold. So it's blue and gold, Notre yeah. Dame, of course. Uh, and then around it is the DNA double helix uh, because this is the new science of compassion, that it's in our DNA. It's in our DNA. Uh, so, yeah, I love that. Well, thank you so much so. for your time.